morning. My name is Chong Yan Gu from CCIT, Queen's University, Belfast. Uh, it's my honor to represent Professor Mel O'Neill and CCIT to present our path works today. Uh, thanks to Ahmad, uh, Ahmad previously mentioned the PATH, you know, saved me a lot of time. Previously, I was worried I don't have much time to present all the slides. Okay. So. So I would like to show the motivation and the significance of path work uh, at first. Okay. Uh, Cisco, uh, Cis sorry, Cisco uh, reported that there will be 50 billion connected devices by 2020. And another forecast uh, by Gartner reports that um, more than half billion uh, wearable devices will be sold uh, worldwide in 2021. Okay, so what does it mean? It means there is a significantly increased market, the Internet of Things. IoT. So the IoT will bring a lot of benefits to our lives. For example, smart homes, smart cities, uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, benefits to our health care and so on. But there's always a but. So uh, the challenge, uh, the benefits and the stress are coming together. So for example, a very Two, uh, two, two researchers um, can fully control a car 20 miles away through a, up, a radio update system. And another example is a very famous white hat hacker. He can easily control uh, the light bulbs on and off in homes by Googling correct terms when he was far away from the other side of America. And in 2016, two researchers from the University of Birmingham, they found that millions of Volkswagen cars have, uh, have a vulnerability to a theft just due to a flaw in the Achilles entry system. Autonomous vehicle is a big potential IoT market. Uh, the low-end sensors of autonomous vehicles will be significantly increased. Just last week, you probably heard the news. Uh, Self-driving Uber kills a woman. <laughs> in the first, in first vital uh, crash through pedestrian, to the best pet pedestrians, okay? And that means, so that means, can you imagine that? Uh, uh, sorry, it, it's not related to the security attack uh, about this accident, but uh, can you imagine that what will be happen if there is a potential security threat in this autonomous vehicle system? So why there are so many risks in the IoT system? Let's before we talk about that, let's have a look at uh, the IoT devices. Okay, so normally the IoT devices had a very high connectivity. Uh, for example, I set the autonomous vehicle as an example. Uh, the process data of one autonomous vehicle is approximate to uh, the process data of 2,666 internet users. And secondly, most uh, uh, IoT devices are very low power. So for example, uh, the low end sensors, uh, the low power uh, MCUs. Finally, um, most IoT devices uh, are probably from third party, produced by third party. So that means they may uh, involve untrusted uh, supply chains. So based on this, the security is a vital part for the IoT uh, devices. However, the conventional security approaches based on complex cryptographic uh, algorithms, um, 
they required a lot of hardware resources to implement, and uh, they are very vulnerable to uh, physical attacks. So that's why some attack, uh, some researchers proposed an alternative uh, pro a security approach, which is physical unclonable functions. So previously, uh, Ahmed already uh, mentioned this. I give some uh, uh, different view of uh, this technology. Uh, so the path is a digital circuit that uses manufacturer process variation to generate a unique digital fingerprint. Okay, so uh, let's look at how does the path work. Normally we have a path circuit embedded into a device. For a given challenge, a unique response will be generated. The same path circuit implemented to a second device. So this device is identical to the first device. That means they have uh, uh, identical components. They are from the same manufacturer. So when we give the same challenge, a unique response will be generated. Okay, so the same to the third one. Based on this operation, this uh, property, we can see that for the path circuit, no two chips give the same response when supplied with the same challenge. Okay. So uh, previously, uh, Ahmed already mentioned a lot of benefits uh, about the paths. So I don't talk too much about this. So uh, in summary, the path uh, doesn't need any uh, memory memory to store the key. Uh, it's easy to evaluate because it's just based on the digital circuit. And uh, it's inherently temper evident. Any changes will affect on the response. And finally, it's hard to predict. Even for the manufacturer, it's, it's impossible to predict the, the response. Okay? And uh, okay, so Hamad already mentioned the path can be uh, categorized into two uh, groups, weak path and strong path. I just want to emphasize here, the weak path and the strong path are not related to their security performance. Okay, so the weak path uh, typically have no uh, challenge or just very few challenge responses. And uh, it assumes the attacker cannot access to, uh, to the response, okay? And for the strong path, we have a lot of challenge response pairs. And uh, the main application of this strong path is, uh, for, the, is for the authentication, okay? Let's have a look at uh, the examples of weak paths. So previously, we already uh, introduced the SRAM path, but butterfly path. So here I show you uh, the circuit, de uh, the details of the circuit of the SRAM path. You can consider as two inverters connected together. So when the power up, the startup values of uh, SRAM cell are exported for the path response. The second one is a butterfly path. So this butterfly path uh, uses two latches, so cross-coupled two latches. When the signal exit is set to high, the whole circuit will be set uh, into an unstable status, okay? After a several o'clock cycles. When the signal exit is set to low, the circuit will go into a stable status to give the output to one or zero. Okay. So that's two examples of the of weak paths. Let's have a look at uh, strong paths. So previously we already know uh, the arbitrary path. So I will skip this part and I will talk about uh, ring oscillator RO path directly. S from this architecture, 
we can see that a group of uh, ring oscillators are involved. So depending on the challenge, two ROs will be selected, and their frequencies are compared to generate one bit response. How, how to evaluate the path? Uh, there are many metrics. So today I introduced two most important uh, metrics here. Uh, the first one is uniqueness. So the uniqueness represents how a path can uniquely differentiate a particular chip among a group of chips uh, of the same type. So we can see that there is an equation here to calculate the uniqueness. Uh, this equation is based on the Hamming distance. So I set an example. Okay. So I set an example here. So these three responses are from the previous example. I show you uh, the de definition of a path. So when we calculate the uniqueness of these three path responses, we calculate the average Hamming distance of them. Okay, so ideally, the uniqueness should be equal to 50%. Another uh, very important uh, metric is uh, reliability. So the reliability exhibits how efficient a path is reproducing the response. And uh, the intro Hamming distance is involved to calculate this. And ideally, the reliability should be 100%. Okay. So I would like to introduce two novel, uh, our CCT path design to you. The first one is our PICO path. So the left diagram shows the one bit PICO path circuit design. In this circuit, we can see uh, it uses two flip flops and two non gates. Two non gates is uh, two, two non gates are architected as an arbiter. So depending on the de uh, propagation time of uh, the upper flip flop and the lower flip flop, so one signal will be real at first. So the uh, the re, the re, the after will choose will decide okay which one is faster and the response will be one or zero. Okay, the so in the middle of this diagram we show that the implementation of our one hundred twenty eight bit pico path design on an settings RT seven FPG and here. So this is one bit pico path implementation on uh, on the slides. We can see that we have balanced the routing of this pico path design. So so based on this balanced routing, we can get a very good uniqueness result here. <coughs> 49.90%, which is very close to the ideal value 50%. And also, we uh, evaluate uh, the reliability test uh, performance of our pico path, which is 96.53% without any poster processing. Okay. So the second uh, Path design I would like to show you is the strong FFA path. Um, so we can see that in this path design we have two. So this okay. Okay. So in this path design we have two delay guns. This one and this one. And in both of these and we have a, a group of flip-flops and multiplexers. Uh, we can
can see that. So the proper vision comes from here to the after, and the proper vision comes from here to the after. It should be different due to the manufacturer process variation. So uh, depending on which one is faster, the results will be one or the other. Okay, so we also implement it uh, to the setting the RT7 FPG. So this is uh, the 64 bit flow plan. And uh, <coughs> so this diagram shows one bit. One bit is the magnitude of our F, uh, of our F -F -E And we can see that we balance the routine and put post delay time in two columns of uh, the hardware of the FPG. And for each delay segment, we balance it that way um, by, by using the hard macro. So due to this balanced routing, we can achieve a very good unique result. Compared to the unique result of 9% of the conventional arbiter path, uh, our strong FFA path achieves 41%. Okay. We also evaluate the reliability result, uh, of our FFA path. Uh, the average reliability over different temperature and uh, voltage is 95%, which is also very good. Okay, does the path have vulnerabilities? Obviously, yes. Uh, previously already mentioned, yeah. So it is a uh, uh, machine learning based modeling attacks. And uh, I would like to show you how, uh, how does the attacker attack the path by using modeling attacks, step by step. Okay, at first we have a path implemented device the attacker will send a lot of a challenge and get a lot of a responses by this path design. And then they use this group of data for uh, training. Okay. And the, the attacker will know what kind of architecture, path architecture used in this device. For example, uh, here I uh, use the arbiter path as, a, as this example. So for this arbiter path, we can derive a linear function to represent it. So in this linear function, uh, we can say this start and represent the delay difference between the two delay paths. Okay, if we know this, So currently, we have the knowledge of uh, uh, training data. Uh, we, we already collected the training data, and we have a knowledge of uh, this linear function. And by feeding both parts into a machine learning algorithm, for example, uh, the logistic regression uh, algorithm, we can predict the response of arbiter path. Okay, uh, so I just show you a simple, a simple example of 
uh, of these modeling attacks. Okay. So to address this, we propose an after uh, based multipath. So the core idea is to use uh, a weak, uh, a simple weak path to obfuscate the input, the, the challenge. So we can see. Previously, I mentioned the, that the modeling attack to model a path just to model the relationship between the input and the output. But if we can break, we can obfuscate um, the relationship, so it, it will be harder for the attacker to attack it. So this is uh, the objective of this uh, machine learning attack resistant path design. Okay, so these are the results by using two commonly used modeling attacks. One is a logistic regression, one is a CMES attack. So the left diagram shows the results by error. Uh, uh, normally, 50, the prediction rate of 50%, that means it's, it's impossible. It's impossible for the attacker to predict it. Um, the, we can see LR achieves almost 50% uh, prediction rate for, for, for this conventional arbiter path and the proposed uh, M path. The right side shows uh, the result from CMES. Uh, a little bit better, but still more difficult for the attacker, uh, the attacker to predict the responses. Okay. So next, I would like to talk about uh, our projects and the commercialization based on uh, path work. So uh, our path already been embedded into an electronic vehicle sy uh, uh, system to improve its security and uh, detect, uh, uh, temper the devices. And uh, this is a collaborated project with, oh, sorry. Five minutes, oh, okay. So, okay. So this is the uh, uh, second project, uh, it's a uh, European FP7 project, project uh, used the path to enhance the smart meter hardware architecture. Okay, so in this project, we set up a large scale of test beds. And in this test bed, we have uh, 264 path instances. Okay. Uh, currently, we are undertaking the key has project to develop and test the novel technologies for IoT security. And uh, to for this project, we have already set up a large path test bed. So uh, we have a unique city CCIT engineering team. So our engineering team build the gap between research opus and the commercial. Uh, exploitations and they produce a lot of uh, proof of concept uh, demonstration, uh, demonstrations. And uh, these, uh, the le left diagram shows uh, one module of our large test bed. So, okay. And the next, I would like to show you uh, one demo of from our engineering team. This is the CC the Puff demonstrator. So, I just used the uh, use two minutes to show how to use our path design to do uh, identification generation and uh, authentication, okay? Oh, 
Oh yeah. So okay. So we have three identical basic three balls. The first step we do an enrollment. So the enrollment um, means when uh, so before leaving the manufacturer, we enroll all these uh, devices to the uh, to the database. And we can see three QR codes are generated. So to so represent the three IDs for three uh, devices. So after enrollment, the pro the devices the product, uh, are, are leaving the uh, manufacturer. And currently we want to identify the second device. So when we press the authentication button, we can see that um, the ID for the second device for second device is highlighted that represents this device has already been enrolled in the database, so it is authenticated. And uh, currently, we are authenticating the first uh, first device. So you can see the ID for first device is highlighted. Okay, that, that's, that's me, that's uh, the demo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for questions. Yes. Um, hello, Basil yeah. Malak from Southampton University. Thank you for the talk. So, uh, one interesting point. So, we try to combine two parts together. And yeah. whenever you try to do that, the reliability just looks yeah. very yeah. So how would you kind of protect your combined part against, for example, temperature variation? Yeah. Because if there's a problem in the first part, this will affect us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a very, very good question. So uh, we, all do, we also consider this problem, and uh, we have already proposed uh, a characteristic uh, post-processing. So with that error correction, uh, we can achieve almost 100% reliability for uh, the first part, the first part for the Pico path. So based on that high reliability, so we can use it for the multi path design. Okay. Yeah. And would so, that kind of increase the cost? So yeah. So we notice that. So uh, you probably uh, so with the Pico path in. Implemented, uh, impact implemented for the SPG. We for each bit we only occupy one bit. Uh, uh, for each so one slice for one bit. So we notice that some slices always give a very reliable output. So we can characterize to do <coughs> most reliable predictions for. So you said you commercialized how much? <laughs> secret. <laughs> oh, it's the secret commercialization. I like secret commercialization. Yeah, no, we, we, uh, <laughs> Sorry, so that's the no offense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the uh, we got a lot of attraction from industry. Yeah. And uh, currently uh, some of them we are under uh, what they're under negotiating for the Further agreement things. Uh, yeah. well, I can't well, talk, well, talk too much that. about that. Yeah, part. okay, you yeah. don't need to talk about it. I, I didn't yeah. expect that. But I, um, you said uh, automotive industry. So, in which part of car do you want to put it? In, in the MCUs? You, you want to put it in the MCU uh, part? So, we embedded the part into that uh, autonomous vehicle. You yeah, you mentioned that you want to uh, wait, uh, secure a vehicle. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so is it, is it plan to put it in an MCU? Uh, it's not only MCUs, um, uh, some sensors, MCUs. Uh, we already set up uh, the large test bed. Uh, at the last slide, I show that. Uh, so two group of uh, test beds. OK, so this one. So two groups are uh, uh, 
we plan to test uh, the performance, the power performance uh, on MCU. So this one uh, is uh, processor with uh, the HD. So these two, uh, two groups we can test. So currently we are undertaking to test uh, the performance of our hospital on MCU. So it's a single use for, for the MCU. It does work between the MCUs. So it's it's a, a general evaluation. So if it can uh, be evaluated on the MCU, so it has a potential utility to use the MCU capability to okay. use the MCU. Okay, we can we can take it yeah. over. We can take it over. Yeah, that's <laughs> entry you can get over. Yeah. Uh, I understand, but yeah. when you put in a, a key in an MCU or put a path in an MCU, then there is not only one MCU in the yeah. 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 So yeah. what do you do on, on, on all over MCU? So you have, let's say, 123 MCUs, just yeah. CPUs for CPU MCUs, so yeah. Yeah. in a Mercedes high class. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how do you want to do pass in every one of them? What, do, what should they do? That's what yeah. I, uh, do you mean how to, uh, so imagine that uh, in one alternative vehicle you have 2,000 MCUs, uh, sorry, 100, for example, 100 MCUs uh, and some uh, sensor, and for each MCU has a unique uh, uh, path, and uh, how can they authenticate, uh, how can they uh, communicate? Uh, exactly, but don't yes. forget that yes. this is only one time authentication, you cannot communicate exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think that's the protocol level for this. If you're using this path uh, uh, idea in your autonomous vehicle, no matter in what kind of MCUs or center, uh, it should be have a very yeah, exactly. yeah, high level. You will get into problems. Okay, well, we can discuss that's, this. That's uh, a protocol level, as, yeah. as my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> One question, yeah. I wondered if you'd seen any uh, aging effects on FPGAs. Do you get any issues with aging effects altering the yeah. puff output? Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. do you actually observe that on FPGA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's, that's another objective of uh, our uh, uh, large-scale test effects. You know, after we set up this uh, uh, test, we will really well do a comprehensive evaluation, including Aging, aging test. Okay, thank you very much. Are there, are there any questions? Which case? Thank you. Let's thank the speaker.